Good afternoon, everyone. I know who my friends are because like six people stood up in the front row. I don't know, guys. I, I'd say let's do that again, but that would be like, you know, major pride, right? You know what, folks? It's really, really good for us to be in God's presence. I, I, I honestly believe that. I am so excited about what I'm going to share with you uh, in the next uh, one hour. Because if you think I'm only taking 19 minutes, it ain't happening. Um, but um, I want to say two things very quickly, very quickly. Number one, if you notice on the announcements, there's an announcement there for starting point classes. And it has my name written on the bottom of it. I really, I'm not going to be teaching it. I guess it's just my endorsement on it. But I won't be teaching the class. But uh, maybe I will once in a while. But anyways, listen, what is starting point? Here's the thing. You're going to be so excited about this. There are some of you this morning, this afternoon, and you are new Christians. In other words, you've just given your life to Jesus and you've just been baptized recently. Um, six months, three months, two months, whatever it is. And maybe there's some of you here, you're not yet a Christian. You're just seeking God and you're just kind of feeling your way out of through things. Well, the starting point sessions are designed specifically for you where we are going to go back to the basics and move forward from the basics. Uh, so if, that, if that's you, our classes are in the speaker's lounge every single Sunday at 11 a.m. From 11 a.m. to 11.30. Here's the deal, guys, and I know you'll think this is a good idea. I would like to see every single person that we have led to Jesus actually be discipled and become a vital part of our local church. Okay, you know what? The, the, okay, the morning, the morning, the morning service was a lot more enthusiastic than that. How many of you think that's a good idea? All right, good. All right, thank you so much. Thank you for, you know, kind of doing that for me. Hey, folks, I want to share a message with you this morning. Again, I know I've been introduced. For those of you who do not know me, I'm the pastor of evangelism and outreach here at our church and also for Catch the Fire Canada and my desire and our vision is to see people coming to Jesus by the hundreds. But here's the other deal. My desire and our vision is also to see all of us, including me, going out there in our world and engaging with people. Going out there and, hey, listen now, learning how to smile. Learning how to shake someone's hand. Learning how to engage. Learning how to be friends with someone who is not a Christian, learning how to intentionally embrace people as opposed to, listen, there's two things that we have a tendency to do in church when it comes to people that are not Christians. We see them as objects to be conquered or objects to be avoided. And here's the deal, we don't wanna do either of those two things. I wanna do a very, very quick um, survey here because my dear friend Kathy asked me to do it again, so I'm gonna do it again. How many of you came to Jesus because someone that you didn't know, you've never met, met you in a park, I don't know, in a mall, in a gas station, at Tim Hortons, and prophesied to you or prayed for you or had a word of knowledge for you or preached the gospel to somebody that you never met before. Let me see your hands. Okay, look around, folks. That's, that's good. That's, that's very good. How many of you got saved because one day you were walking down the street, you saw a sign for a crusade, and you said, hey, there's a crusade thing. I think I'm going to check this out. And you went all by yourself to a meeting where somebody is preaching the gospel, and you gave your life to Jesus. Let me see. Anybody? Any hands? How many of you got saved because you were watching TV one day, and you saw a preacher on the TV screen, and he said, Put your hands on the screen. I, I always have to do that. That's no. And he was preaching, and uh, as a result of TV, you actually prayed a sinner's prayer, and you got saved. Let me see your hands, please. Okay, good. Okay, two. How many, how many of you came to Jesus because you were in a hotel room or somewhere, and you decided to grab a Bible all by yourself, and you opened it up to the red writing, and you just, and you read the words of Jesus, and something the Holy Spirit touched you all by yourself. You read the Bible and you gave your life to Christ. Let me see your hands. Okay. How many of you are Christians? 
Okay, I, okay, you know, I, again, we had to do this in the first service. I just want to make sure I was not addressing the Mormon church this morning. So you are. Okay, you know where I'm going with this, don't you? How many of you came to Christ because somebody became your friend who was a Christian who led you to Jesus or brought you to a meeting? Someone connected and engaged you in a non-spiritual way, and through that friendship, you came to Jesus. Let me see your hands. Look around, folks. Look around. What does that tell us? Well, it's not rocket surgery. <laughs> you know where I got that from, right? I didn't really mean that. It's not rocket science. Folks, we're going to change this world. We're going to turn the world upside down. You know why? Because every single one of you and me, all of us together, are going to take the glory of God that's in us, and we are intentionally going to engage with people. And through that engagement, through that love, through that connection, we're going to see people coming to Jesus. That's it. That's it. Now, come on. I'm excited about that. I want to share a message with you this morning, this afternoon, and this message is entitled, Words to Live By. Words to Live By. Folks, you know, we, um, you know, uh, depending on how you do this Google search, I don't know. I mean, you can find out anything on Google now, right? It's got to be true. It's on Google, right? There are 25, uh, 30 to 50,000 words that we use in the English language on a regular basis. 30 to 50,000 words. Isn't that amazing? And, and we use something like three to 5,000, I think it is three to 5,000 words, ev no, two to 3,000 words every single day. Now, now, it's not like two, two, like sometimes we might use the same word 100 times or 300 times, like the word and or but or whatever, right? But two to 3,000 words a day. Now, if you live in the Heinz household where we have three ladies and two gentlemen, the ladies' words are much more than two to 3,000. <laughs> My daughter just says, says you, old man. Listen, we live by words. We live by words. How many of you remember when you were younger? And we won't define younger. <laughs> You know, people look at me, they go, oh my gosh, Curtis, I, we, we knew you, we've known you for 25 years, you haven't changed. Well, you know, yeah, you know, like, Botox is really cheap these days. <laughs> and when I tell people, my wife and I have been married 29 years, they, it's like, yeah, I married her when I was 10, like, what do you think, you know? <laughs> How many of you remember when you were kids and you were on the playground? How, you remember as a kid how wicked other kids were to you? Some of us are still carrying the scars of how cruel children can be. Well, I was one of those cruel kids. <laughs> Boo. Yes, but then I got saved and, you know, all the good stuff happened. How many of you remember some of the wicked things kids would say? And, and okay, this is going to date you for sure. How many of you remember this? Sticks and stones will break my bones, but I remember that one. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. And why did we say that? I can be honest now. How many of you said it? Okay, three people. Oh, dear. Okay, we all said it. Why did we say it? Because some stupid snot-nosed kid was terrible to us. They said something so mean. I mean, guys, you remember those days? Kids, kids will say things that don't even make sense that are mean, like, you, you're, you're just a stupid broom handle. I mean, it just makes no sense. But they'll, you remember those days, right? But here's, here's the thing. It's true that sticks and stones will break our bones. But it's not true that words will never hurt you. Listen, folks. Words make a difference. What words are you living by? You see, I played semi-pro football. Come on July 1st. I want you to come July 1st. I will be speaking July 1st. I want you to bring all of your unchurched friends. Bring your entire neighborhood because we're going to have a good time. We're going to share football stories, huh? Football stories. 
You know what? When I played football, I would get cuts and bruises and bangs and knocks and concussions. I mean, that's just, that's just, that's just part of it. That's just part of it. It's amazing that I even know my name today. But it's just, it's just part of it. But you know what I notice about every cut and bruise and every knock and every bang? My body would heal itself. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. When it comes to words, listen now, listen. Your body will heal itself of a cut or a bruise, but I want you to know something. Words that have been spoken to you, that have cut and bruised you on the inside, words that have been spoken to us, do not heal on their own. Well, it doesn't hurt as much anymore, Curtis, when my father said you're useless. It doesn't hurt as much. Well, it might seem as if it doesn't hurt as much, but really what we've done is we've buried it, haven't we? I want to share a story with you. And this story is about a young man. And this young man's name is Yasser. Yasser was a very, very brilliant young man. Highly motivated, very intelligent, an excellent kid, a fine young man who was one of those overachiever types. You see, the reason Yasser was an overachiever and he worked so hard was he would do absolutely anything in the world to be pleasing to his father. And everything that he did came out of that motivation for his dad to see him. But here's the problem with Yasser's father. He was one of those guys that was not easy to please. And Yasser would try so hard, folks. He would try so very hard to please his dad. And with his best efforts, with his best efforts, his father's response usually felt like, eh. Yasser went to university, and he literally killed it. In his first year, he made it on the dean's list. He had an average of over 85%. And he worked so hard to achieve that. And when he found out that he made the dean's list, the first thing Yasser did, as you can guess, is he called his father. And he said to his dad, he said, Dad, Dad, look what I did. Look what I achieved. Look what I, I made it onto the dean's list. Dad, Dad, look what I did. I worked so hard. Dad, please, please, can you approve of me? Please, can you acknowledge that I did something right? And while he was on the phone with his father, he said, Dad, what do you think? And just then, his dad had another call that came through and he said, yes, sir, yes, yes. I need to get this call, it's important. I'll talk to you later. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And Yasser began to spiral down into a hole, a hole in the ground as he spiraled literally into hell. At first it started out that he didn't bother going to classes anymore, and then he started drinking. He said two, three drinks a day. It was like 15, 20 drinks a day, and he was just going. Then he started doing light drugs, you know, and then he started getting really heavy into the drugs and hanging out with the wrong people, and literally, when his relative bumped into him, literally, because the whole family had heard about it, that Yasser was falling apart, literally. He was living, literally, on the streets, barely surviving. He looked a mess. And one relative approached him and said to him, Yes, sir, what have you done? Look at you. Why has your life turned out like this? And Yasser said to him, You know why? Because if the one person, if the one person that means everything to me doesn't approve of anything that I do, then my life isn't worth anything. Well, it didn't stop there. Yasser began to spiral even deeper until one day 
The family received a phone call that he was in, he was in, he was in the emergency. You see, Yasser had overdosed, and he was literally on death's door. And as he was lying there on the, on the emergency room bed, hooked up to a life support system, all that they could hear was boop, 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 boop. And then all of a sudden, boop. Emergency workers came flooding into the room and they, they put the paddles on him. Clear! 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 Yes, or died. But it was clear. It was abundantly clear that words make a difference. His life would have been saved if he had just heard the right words. Son, I am proud of you. I want to share an interesting stat with you folks. You know, there's a website called selfesteem.com. Listen to this. This is going to blow you away. Selfesteem.com. They did a study among young women, college-age women. Listen to this. 80% of them link their negative body image to, listen now, negative comments and words that were spoken to them by their relatives and their friends. They link their negative body image, 80% of them, to words. Words make a difference. What words are you living by? Words make a difference. I want to give you the definition of a script, and I'll sort of flow in where I'm going with this. What is a script? Well, in machine language, <laughs> that's the only way I can describe it. A script is sometimes used to mean a list of operating systems and commands that are pre-stored in a file and performed sequentially by the operating system. Okay, that sounds like I know what I'm talking about. I don't. Basically, you see the enter button. Well, there's a predefined, predetermined set of rules, and it's a script that, that, that when you hit that, it operates in a certain way. Well, well, in the creative arts, there are scripts that are written. Many of us watch movies. Every single movie or show that you watch is a script that's written. And what is a script? It is a written series of events or actions that is intended to be acted out. I think you know where I'm going with this. Here, I want to read to you an example of a script that I printed out from the movie Blood Diamond. Here's an example of a script. A man's hand, hardworking, rough, lights, twigs under a kettle. Pre-dawn light trickles through the tin walls onto well-worn farming tools. Ho, pickaxe, a yoke for an ox. The hand that lit the kettle takes the books off the shelf and gently nudges a 14-year-old boy awake with them. Solomon Vandy smiles down at his son. In Mendy, subtitle, don't want to be late. The boy sits up half asleep, sleepily pulls a shirt over his head. His English is more school than his father's. And in Mendy, subtitled, English boys go to school every day? Solomon fills a tin cup of powdered milk. He's a man marked by quiet patience in the worn trousers and white cotton shirt of a Mende farmer. He hands a cup to the boy in Mende, subtitled, Yes, They Do. And his son says, No, not every day. Okay, this is a script. It's a, it's, it, it's, it's a predetermined set of words that are intended to be acted out. Now, here's where I want to go with this, folks. Every single one of us in this room has scripts in their lives. Every one of you has a script or several scripts 
Words make a difference. What words are you living by? Let me give you a few examples of what your script might be. And then I'll give you some examples of what mine might be. You're sitting in an office room, in an office, and the CEO is sitting in a large leather dimpled chair, intimidating and imposing. And you're sitting across from him. You're just the manager, but he's called you into his audience. And the first thing that he says to you is, I've been watching your work from a distance. And I want to talk to you about it. Now, if your script was a healthy one, you would respond by saying, you better believe you've been watching me at a distance. I've been working my tail off for this company. And you'd be thinking about the bonus you're going to get. But if your script is much like mine, much like ours, here's what you're thinking. Oh my God. I'm going to die. Or... I can never do enough for these stupid people. <laughs> Why do we react like that? Why? Because there are scripts that are written in our lives. And you and I cannot escape those scripts. No matter how hard we try, we can't escape those scripts. Words make a difference. What words are you living by? Now, here's some really good news for you this morning, this afternoon. I want to show you with an absolute guarantee that you and I can rewrite the scripts and grow into power-filled, effective, healthy lives. Okay, I thought I'd get one, more than one cheer on that one. Listen now, listen. It's okay. It's okay, I believe it. <laughs> we can live by God's script. The script that we have been given to live by, the words that we have been given to live by are words that are powerful and alive. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter four, look at this, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna kinda Give you, show you some of my dirty laundry here this morning. Okay, Hebrews chapter 4. Listen to what the Bible says, verse 12. For the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It, what is the it? God's words, God's script. It penetrates even to dividing of soul and spirit. Watch this now. Joints and marrow. Here's the part I love the most. It judges the thoughts and intents of the heart. Folks, what I'm trying to tell you is this. God's word that's alive and active, God's script assesses our scripts. It assesses what we think. It assesses how we think. It assesses why we think that way. Now listen, I'm not just talking about just memorizing words. Folks, as I said this morning, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think they figured that one out by now. In other words, what am I saying? What comes first? Is it God's written word or is it the Holy Spirit? Is it the anointing or is it God's word? What it is is both. Folks, it's both. The Holy Spirit cannot be separated from the Word of God. The Word of God cannot be separate from the Holy Spirit. Listen, when you and I enable God's Spirit through His Word to change the language of our hearts, we become more like Jesus. Okay, I want to show you something. Here, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's your homework assignment. Oh, here's your homework assignment. I want you to do this. I want you to consciously take every negative script that you have playing in your mind in your life, and I want you to write it down. 
Oh boy. Well, Curtis, did you do that? I'm still doing it. I started doing this several years ago, but I'm about to show you. I'm still doing it. I want you to write down the negative scripts. What are they like? You know, the basics. I'm fat, ugly, and stupid. You know, the basic stuff. You know, nobody will ever love me. I'll never amount to anything. Nobody will ever really trust me. I can never really trust anyone. Every time I try to accomplish something, I always fall short. Those are the negative scripts. Where did they come from? Well, you know what? Forget about finding out where they came from. Just make sure you identify them and write them down. I want you to write them down on one half of a page. And here's the work. I want you to take a day, a week, a month, six months, a year if you have to. And I want you to go through the Word of God. And I want you to find what God's script says and counter what your negative script is with God's script. Listen, my dear friends, I want to tell you something, and please don't misunderstand me. It is so incredibly important for us to get the junk inside of our hearts healed up. But I want you to know, in order for you and I to grow in Christ's likeness, it doesn't come by us getting prayed for on a line. That won't happen that way. We have to take the truth of God's Word and apply it to our lives. So this is what I want you to do. Come on, Jesus. This is what I want you to do. I want you to do that. I want to give you a guarantee. And I stand for, I'm going to guarantee, I stand for Catch the Fire Toronto. I stand for our church on this. If you do that, and you go over those scripts, the good scripts, every single day, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if it doesn't work, come back to me and tell me I'm a liar. Your life will be transformed. Listen, how do I know that? Well, because are you transformed, Curtis? Well, guys, how many of you, none of us have arrived. If we've arrived, th then we're Jesus. I ain't Jesus. You're not Jesus. I'm like him, but I'm not Jesus. Okay, when I did this, you know, my list was only 10 negative things long. No, just kidding. <laughs> 10, good, good Lord have mercy. It was, it was, it was countless almost. And I, I wrote them all out. And then I went to work and I started getting sometimes the positive script that we need to write is not necessarily directly from God's Word, but it might be, I am going to believe that I can make it, right? So I wrote down the positives from the Word of God and from my own heart on the other side and I recited them every single day. I'm telling you, this is what you need to do every single day. Do I do it every day now? No, I don't. Maybe I should, but I don't. Will your list change? Yes. There's some things on my list, on my negative scripts that I, I erase. It's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I don't need to deal with this anymore. And then there's other things that came in and replaced it. But I do this on a regular basis. Okay, here's, 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 here it is. Here it is. This, this is what it looks like. I've itemized them. Would you like, would you like to hear some of them? Oh, I'm sure you would. I'm just going to give you the positives because you know what? The negatives is none of your business. Here we go. Here's my one. I've got a long, long list, pages of them. And I go over them all the time. All the time. Especially when I'm starting to feel like, ooh, I go over my script, my God scripts all the time. Here we go. Here we go. Here's one, I am growing every day into the leader and the person that I was born to be and I am strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Second Timothy chapter two, verse one. Here we go. I love my wife. She is one with me and I am a great husband. Ephesians chapter five, 25 to 30. Self-disclosure is the key to intimacy, folks. 
I do not fear the future or any possible bad news because I know that only goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Psalm 23, 1 to 6. And you know what? When you do this, don't just, oh, just love and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Yeah. Listen, pretend the New Testament is true and act like you believe it. Amen. Okay, a couple more and I gotta, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. Oh, look at this now. This, oh my goodness, this is good. The, my best days of leadership, growth, and productivity are now and the best is still to come. Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. Come on now. Now that, oh, that one's a little bit too close to heart. I'm not gonna read that one. All right, so you get the idea. You get the idea. Curtis, what's been the effect of this? It's transforming my life. So if you don't want it, that's fine. But I know you do. I want to invite you to stand right now, please. My dear brothers and sisters, listen. Words make a difference. What words are you living by? So I want you to do this. And we want to hear from you. I want to hear how it's going. We want to hear how it's going. So let's just lift our hands to the Lord right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we are so thankful for your word today. So thankful for everything that you are. We're thankful to be able to worship you the way we worshiped you. We thank you for your presence, Jesus. We want to submit to you all of our negative scripts. Everything in our lives, Lord, everything in my life that's, that's there, stuff that's there, we, we, just, we just want to submit it to you. And Lord, give us the grace, give us the wisdom to search your word, to establish your words over our lives. Lord, give us the, give us the stickability to be able to do this stuff every single day. Well, Lord, we take your word seriously. We take this life in you seriously. And we thank you. Thank you that you have given us these words to live by. Now, as our hands are raised, just stay there in that place in the presence of the Lord. Our pastor, Jojo, did an awesome job just, just kind of throwing things out to you. But I want to do it again. Yeah, I want to do it again. Is there anybody here who would say to me, Curtis, you know what? Man, those words to live by, I, I haven't even started at step one. I'm just learning today that, that God's for me, not against me. You know what that means? That means that you need to be born again. And what does it mean to be born again? It means that God's Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that you're feeling in this place, <laughs> wants not just for you to feel him on the outside but he wants to come and live on the inside of you and give you a gift and here's that gift the gift is a gift of everlasting life that's what Jesus did when he died on the cross he was buried and he was raised from the dead he ascended up into heaven and the Bible says that he gave his Holy Spirit so that you could be born again okay if you are not born again and you want to be, you want to experience God on the inside, I want you to do me a favor. I'm going to come down here. And apart from that, we're dismissed. But I want you to do me a favor. If that's you, I want you to come and meet me down here because I want to pray for you. If you need Jesus, you've never given your life to him. You need Jesus. You want him on the inside. These words to live by will then belong to you. Jesus is, Jesus is the door, not my message. My message isn't the door. Jesus is the door. You've got to come through the door first before the message can apply to you. So if you haven't stepped through the door, come on, I want you to meet me down here, right here. If you brought somebody today, and you know that person has not stepped through that door and who is Christ, come and meet me here today. Come, just come, I'm, I'm waiting. I want to pray for you all over this place just come right now 
Just come right now. This isn't about me. This is about you. Come, meet me here right now. Okay. Anyone here? Anyone? Anyone here? All right. Folks, Lord bless you. Our encounter ministry time is what you're going to do when you go home. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. And we'll see you again next week.